Yo, smooth all the Mexican. I saw Blue Beetle. Oh, you like it? That shit was fucking phenomenal. What's it about? A Mexican who got superpowers? Well, what were the superpowers? One of his powers is whatever weapon he can conceive in his mind, the, the suit will do. So one of his powers is you can do it. <laughs> is that what you're trying to tell me? Does he have more arms? Yes. Oh, so he can work even <laughs> harder. One, one man contract. <laughs> Yo, how do they do this to Mexicans all the time, yo? It's so disrespectful. He couldn't fly. He couldn't no, shoot webs. He could fly. They just gave him eight more arms no. so he could hammer shit. He could fly. He, he can, can also fly know. over borders and shit like that. Yo, Alex, but no, you are he, such an he, insensitive he, he, individual. But I enjoyed Blue Beetle. I actually want to see where this story goes. Where did it end on this one? Uh, Citizen Shepherd. Uh, Scott. What's that? This what? guy is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charlemagne the God. Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online, whether you're just starting out uh, or managing a growing brand. Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website and engage your audience to sell anything from products to content to time, okay? All in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch... Go to www.squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Happy New Year, Hezzy. Happy New Year, my brother. We are back, man. 2024. How was your holidays? I was in the city, man, so it felt like a lot of work. You didn't go nowhere? No. You didn't treat yourself to a vacation? All the fucking work you've been putting in all year? No, no, no. You just stayed in the city? Stayed Stayed local. We're renovating an apartment. That's been an absolute abomination. Oh, my God. By the way, motherfuckers can't talk about no money. I don't care about your little cars. I don't care about your jewelry. Tell me about your fucking house renovation, Yo, bro. if, yo. Tell me about your, are you getting your kitchen done? Here's the thing about this house renovation. It's, yeah, it's pretty much doing everything. Ooh. And, uh... I was telling the boys this. I, I've never respected Trump more. Talk to me. Then when I found out he didn't pay his contractors, I'm like, yo, you're you're. I don't see how that's possible. He at least had to put up the front end. He's a hero, this guy. So hold on. Who the, there's no contractors that's coming to do work without getting no money. Now you like it, though. <laughs> now I mean, there's you a like loophole it. that I can use. That, 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 yeah, yeah, now you like it. <laughs> Uncle TT, Uncle TT figures something out. What's the loophole? I don't know. We got to get to the bottom of it, but my man Trump What's the knows. loophole? Let him in to work and send him right back over the border? Yeah, What's the there loophole? you go. He figured What's it the, out. What's the Build loophole? Build the wall so they can't collect. <laughs> he got a lot of Mexicans trying to get paid for them taco bowls or whatever he had in his Trump Tower. Yo, salute to all the Mexicans. I saw Blue Beetle on my flight back from Dubai. That shit was amazing. Oh, you liked it? That shit was was fucking phenomenal. That's what I'm talking about. You seen Blue Beetle? Yeah. What's it about? A Mexican turned Blue Beetle? <laughs> a Mexican who got superpowers? And, and what are his superpowers? What were his superpowers? I don't know, really. I mean, he was just super strong. But like, it was because of an alien orb or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it was working on some shit, and then it connected to the, his back, and then it just gave him a bunch of superpowers. Well, but what were the superpowers? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever your brain wants yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> By the way... In Blue Beetle. How the fuck y'all listen, don't know listen, what his superpowers listen, are? Y'all saw the movie. I'll give you one, one. One of his powers is whatever he can imagine, whatever weapon he can conceive in his mind, the, the, the suit will do. So one of his powers is, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> is that what you're trying to tell me? You know what's so funny? His dad gave him that speech. <laughs> what did he say? When his dad died, his dad, gave, his dad was like in the after realm because he was about to die. Yeah. Oh, they did so a he was Black talk- Panther? Yeah, so he yeah. was talking to his pops. And what did his dad say? <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> basically, <laughs> that's, that's basically what it Are is. Are you looking man. up Blue Beetle's powers because you forgot what they were? No, I was trying to pronounce my guy's name, man, but I can't pronounce it. How do you pronounce that? X-O-L-O. Oh, Jolo, man. Jolo. Now, Jolo's the dude. Nah, he, he, he was in the Karate Kid, too. Big brilliant idiots listener. I know. Yeah. I talked to him. That's the motherfucking, that's the guy, bro. Yeah, I met him over the, uh, I met him over the summer. I'm no, no, but shout out to Blue, last summer. But what is the idea with Blue Beetle? Like, so I, it's a good movie. Does he, he have more arms? Yes. Oh, so he can work even <laughs> harder. One, one man contract. 
One man, one man contract. Yo, how do you do this to <laughs> Mexicans all the time, yo? It's so disrespectful. He couldn't fly. He couldn't no, he shoot fly. webs. He they just gave him eight more arms no. so he could hammer shit. He could fly. He could fly. This is fucked up, yo. <laughs> Come on, DC. DC, have some respect for no, our he people. Could, he could fly. Viva could la fly. raza. He definitely. You know what's so interesting he also? Fly over borders and shit like that. Yo, Alex, but no, you are he, such an he, insensitive he, 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 individual. You said he bro. took orders? No, I said he could fly. He could fly over stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did take orders, though. Like, the suit told him what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, this, like, he literally... He li <laughs> so no, the, seriously. Hold on. He works saying, for the suit. The suit is a general contractor. <laughs> <laughs> so the suit is a general contractor, and you put a suit on a Mexican, and then they can get a hundred more things done than they already... These are already the most productive people. This is fucked up, I'm bro. telling you, man. It absolutely is. And it comes with a night? Can it roll a burrito? <laughs> Listen, does it turn into Yo, a Chipotle? They ate mad tacos. No, come George on. Lopez's, I'm serious. Oh, shout George out to the Lopez's goat. Shout out to the truck goat, George. in the movie is called The Taco. I'm That's not, not even creative. joking. He's like, you stole a taco. That's not like, that creative, bro. I'm telling you. I enjoyed the movie, though. And I don't enjoy, you know, I, don't, I hate DC. DC sucks. So maybe I just got so much superhero fatigue that I enjoyed this. But I enjoyed Blue Beetle. I actually want to see where this story goes. Where did it end on this one? Uh, Citizenship or uh, this guy? What's that? This what? guy is crazy. What? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, what happened? Was it? Did it become legal or? There is a part in the movie where they get because they, the, the the fucking orb that he's using. What, what do they call it, Alex? I don't. They know. They call it something in the movie. Whatever's giving him these powers, yeah, is extraterrestrial. <laughs> Put the white woman calls it an alien. Oh no, they did. Joe is like, yo, no. I don't like you. I don't like you calling me the alien. Yeah. He's like, you can use it if you want to, but I don't like that you. word. Hurts. <laughs> that word. Don't call my son an alien. Oh no, they got the abuela there too with the braids in. <laughs> they got the mama coco. <laughs> Man, you stupid. What? Tell me how you they didn't pay the contract, man. There. Say again? Tell me how you didn't pay the contract. No, I paid them tons. He keeps on getting paid. Nothing getting done. But how That's did Trump not pay him? Because Trump is is probably one of the greatest Americans in history when I found out. Chris, tell me more, man. Does somebody know this story? Once Chris what is quiet, he knows he's on to something. I know he knows. <laughs> he knows he's on to something. Talk what to us, What they Chris. do is they say, hey, we have a job. We can't pay you up front, but you're going to do this job for us. You're going to be known as someone who works for the Trump organization. It's going to open up your entire career. Come in and do it. And then halfway through the job, they don't pay them. And they dare the people to go to court, and Trump has lawyers on retainer, and it's always cheaper for him to fight it in court. And then the people give up, and then he just brings in another contractor and runs the same thing, and they finish the job, and then he doesn't pay that guy either. That's what they do with all their businesses. Legend. 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 Why go through all that, though? Why not just pay these motherfuckers? If they're working on buildings, and then you don't have to pay none of them, that's... Who are these motherfuckers that would do all of this work and not get paid? Does, like, do contractors need shout outs? That sounds yeah. like some podcast shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? mean? I get yeah. a shout out on the podcast. Nah, I mean, look, I'm fucking around. Like, obviously, I want everybody to get paid, but I think a lot of times it happens with yeah, contractors. Yeah, but you also want to save money. So, no, I, I, want, I want the shit to get done, saying, bro. It's but you want to save, save money. money. No, we do. We do. We do. Renovations are a lot. I had a meeting. I, I, tell you, I think I might have said this on the podcast. I don't know. My dude who's the agent, I was with my agents in Atlanta and. They had another agent there who represents this NFL player, and the agent said to me verbatim, I don't give a fuck about no phantoms, no jewelry. When you talk to me about paying home renovations, that's it. That's when you know somebody getting money. Home renovations cost I mean, crazy. it's demoralizing to keep spending money, and you walk in your home, and it, nothing changed. Yeah, I know. That's like, what, what are we spending money on? <laughs> Listen, I say all the time. I tell my wife all the time. Why didn't we just buy a more modern house? Bro, this is <laughs> like, the thing. Let me like, tell you why. Why buy a house just to gut This is why, because we think that we're smarter than everybody. We're like, yo, we're going to buy this cheap house, and then we're going to put a million dollars into it, and it's going to be worth twice as much. Like, nobody ever had this fucking idea. Like, we're the only ones in history that think we can renovate a place and it's worth twice as much. Yeah, I, I, but see, to your point, what you just said, I didn't have a number in mind. But when the number gets to that, you're like, well, what the fuck what the did fuck you do? What the on, fuck yo? is happening, yo? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? What are we making this into? This shit was perfectly fine when we got here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, what nah, the fuck? Nah, I get it now. I but, get it now. You know, it is what it is. Salute to everybody doing home renovations. What else did we miss? What else did you do over the holidays? Well, you man? went to Africa, bro. I mean, like, let's talk about Africa. You went to another part of Africa. This is Yeah, this is... Uh, last year, I was in Ghana for New Year's Eve. This year, I went to uh, Zanzibar. 
Now, Zanzibar is off the coast of... I don't know. Tanzania. Tanzania. I thought, I, I thought it was the same thing. Tanzania, Zanzibar, but I guess not. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Well, the island of Zanzibar is off the coast of Tanzania. Yes. I don't know if it's the same country. Yeah. I had a ball, man. You know, it's a beautiful feeling. There's just something... Um, it's something when you go to parts of Africa and you're black, you do feel some type of weight off you. Like you you prefer to have black people working for you? Is that what you're saying? This guy. Um, like nah. you like to see him working. No, no, no. It's just it's just like there is a certain weight <laughs> yeah. that you have when you're black in America, whether it's actually a reality or it's just something in your mind, you know, I yes. don't know, yeah. but you feel it, you know, it's a certain weight you feel as a black person in America. When you in, and when you in Africa, when I was in Ghana, I definitely didn't feel it. Right. When I was in Zanzibar, I definitely didn't feel it. The only thing that's interesting to me about Zanzibar is everybody there is like European. Like the people that go there for like tourism to visit, it's like they're European. They're like, mm. you know, people from Russia, people from Italy, people from different parts of, of Europe, right? And it's like, they know about that beauty, but we don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, they're over there living it up in Zanzibar, enjoying it. Like, I love it. It's a spice island, mad fresh fruits, mad fresh vegetables. The beach is beautiful. Like, we, I, 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 I thoroughly enjoy Would it. Would you go back? Yes. I mean, the biggest thing is just to travel. You that's know? A, I think that's the reason why a lot of times it's hard for Americans. Because, like, yeah, there's so much beauty out there, but... 19 hours. Fam. Straight up. Man, wow. 19 hours. 19 hours on a plane is crazy. Now, I'm the type of person I enjoy the ride, though. Nah. I enjoy the 15 hour plane ride from fucking. Because, because you gotta, we went from New York to Dubai, then Dubai to Zanzibar. So New York to Dubai is 15, Dubai to Zanzibar is like five. You know what I mean? I enjoy the plane ride, though. Like, I'm the guy that sits up there, catches up on movies I would never go to the theater to see. Right. You know, I'm writing, I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm off social media. You have view time. Yeah, I enjoy it. You know what I mean? And like, you know, you've flown Emirates before. Yeah. Emirates is a great airline. Fantastic. Like, you get to walk around. You get the shower one? Do you have a no, shower no, in yours? too much money. See, it's, you wild. You can't have renovations and first class on goddamn Emirates. <laughs> That's that, you, 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 you wild. You know what I mean? Business class is perfectly okay, you know, for me. Plus, I'm traveling with seven people. What? I got four kids and a wife. You brought your wife? <laughs> this guy's yes. crazy. You always bro. bring your wife to Muslim countries. <laughs> what are you talking about? Why, why? Let her know, like, look. This is what it could it be. It could be. It could be three All more. that talking back shit. <laughs> All that talking back shit. I can have two other women talking back to me, too. Wait your turn. Okay? Y'all crazy. No, for real. You go from Dubai where you're allowed to have more than so one wife. three wives, bro. In Muslim countries, it works. But imagine three women not in giving Muslim you In Muslim countries, it works. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> come on, come on. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Imagine three women being too tired. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Man. That's the whole point of having sure. other wives, though. What do you mean? Wouldn't that be the whole point? Yeah, but what if they start ganging up on you? Nah, it don't work like that. You keep adding wives. <laughs> you keep adding wives. You yeah. keep adding, you keep motherfucking adding wives. I just, that just seems like torture, bro. Three you wives. You bro. say that until you live in that life. I'm Three not. Wives? I'm not Imagine knocking nobody. Up too. Three girlfriends all getting the same fucking period coming at you. Typhoon Lagoon. Nah, you can't all have the same period. They sync so up. They That's do, what women they do. Up, they it's your wives, though. Period what is stop, that? Period don't stop nothing but a sentence. Still? I'm not talking about sex during the period. I'm talking about just. <laughs> A conversation. Oh, you mean everybody being upset at... Is that true? What do you mean is that true? Like women being angry when they're period long? Well, maybe if you let your wife not be pregnant one year, <laughs> <laughs> then you'll find out. Taylor, is that this true? Guy, this guy found a way around the system. <laughs> do women get angry when they... I, I mean, I, I see that stereotype all the time. I don't know if that's really true. I want to say it's like something about being angry. We do get more sensitive. Okay. Like for me... So when sometimes you have an attitude with us here, do you think it's because Most of, of the time it's a week before, though. Yeah, that's premenstrual syndrome. So PMS. Yeah. So the week before, like, if you sometimes come in here and you have an attitude and you're just being mean to everybody and rude, you don't even say hello. Like, do you think that <laughs> has to do with that? No, not really. You what is what do you, what does it have to do with? I'm just saying we're just more sensitive around that time. That's all. But I might be having a bad day, and also we were going to talk about earlier. What? 
You walked in, turned your back on me. I didn't see you. You lost weight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, leave Dang me alone. Mind, I'm not doing oh, this with you. What are you talking about, Crazy. yo? She lost weight. So I'm not doing Usually this when with I you. walk in the room, it's slanted. <laughs> and the room was completely even this time, so I didn't even think that she was there. I think you lost weight. And you angry We're at me. We're going to start this... Really? On the Why? New Year? Right, fine. You didn't lose weight. On the New Year? How, how can I never win? Start this on the New Year? How can I never win? I'm going to this on the New Year. How can I never win, yo? I said you lost weight. I'm this guy's here. out here hating. I didn't say nothing. I didn't hear what you said, actually. You didn't, didn't say, say nothing. Anything. What did you say? Taylor, you sitting right here. You know I didn't say nothing. Yo, you are crazy. Taylor's You're crazy. crazy person, bro. <laughs> I'm guy, sitting here the whole time. You I said say you look like you lost weight. Y'all want to go over Taylor, some stuff? Lying, I know they are. <laughs> Y'all start to do it. Y'all start to do it. How am I lying? That's, 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 that's crazy, yo. It's fine. No, I think, I, by the way, though. Because look, what? Yeah. What are you going to say? Everybody should go to Africa. I'm going this year. This is, I love it. This I a, went to Africa. Africa is amazing. Place. I'm, I, I, and by the way, I went to go look for property in Zanzibar, <laughs> yeah. too. You went to look at property? You're goddamn right. And by the way, it's very affordable. <laughs> like, Zan, I'm talking about just in general. Like, I Zanzibar that, yeah, is very I'm, affordable. Like, you know, you, you go to dinner with seven people, it's $300. I mean, yeah, but you have children. Like, they, they, what are they eating? <laughs> <laughs> they're not drinking. No, they're no, not. no, 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 no. Not my children. Oh, the, do you have like expensive palate kids? They, they don't. What, what else do they know? <laughs> like, are they eating caviar? Are they having oysters? Yeah, like, what's they going like on? Stuff like that. And then I don't. I got like my. my uh, it's just go I, go go go. No, you were onto something. You're nah, what? Nah, man, it's just nah, say, cause yeah yeah yeah. Nah, you got my, it. You like, got it. My nah. eight year old is like really into video games and like you know like I let her play Minecraft and you know I let her watch the videos on YouTube to learn how to play. Minecraft, and what I forget is it's actually motherfuckers playing and talking. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing all of this new slang coming from my eight year old, and I'm where the fuck is this shit coming from? <laughs> so I had to have a conversation with her last week about how you don't shame people for, for not being financially well off. <laughs> Wait, what? Because I'm listening to her, and she's like, yeah, bro, boy. No, 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 no. What the fuck? No, no, no. What the fuck? And she's like, yeah, such and such on YouTube. She named the person like such and such on YouTube called somebody a broke boy. And she thinks that's so funny. I mean, and I'm like, it is. It is funny. She don't know what that means, really. Which though. makes it funnier. Know. You know what I'm saying? Imagine how funny it's gonna be when she knows. <laughs> like she half of the funny she don't even realize. Once she knows how funny that shit is. I can't believe you insulted when I said that you look good and then you look like you Why lost weight. Why do you keep trying to try to Because every me time right. I'm nice to you, you Yo, more. it's 2024. You don't have no new resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> no two years resolutions, yo. Like, stop lying. How about that one for 2024? Yo, <laughs> we're going to talk about what just happened to you. I <laughs> had a fucking stroke in the yeah. middle of his sentence. Man, I was on a plane all day. I just got here. I landed at fucking 12 o'clock. That's dedication, bro. 7 o'clock in the evening. What time is it now? 8 o'clock? That's dedication. 6.30. 6 .30. What did you do for the New Year's, Taylor? Um, I actually went to go see my nieces. And hey. I shot a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw your aunties? What about your... <laughs> you saw some of your aunties? Oh, fuck, I forgot. I told you. I was high, too, when I told you. Tell me about some of your aunties. Wait, what's up? What's up with your aunties? <laughs> it's Andrew's face. What's your aunties? Basically, they, was asking, they was asking about something like, tell Charlemagne. That your mama ain't the only one with good pie. Get the fuck no. out of here. Yeah, oh, yeah. wow. There's competition. Yeah, yeah. There's competition. <laughs> your mom better act right. <laughs> With all due respect, I'm just saying, your mom better act right. Throw some extra sweetener in that pie because she got some competition. <laughs> Yo. Can we, can we do, the, she sent do me this the text. podcast? I didn't late. reply back. I just gave it a heart emoji. Oh, no. You know how you do the heart? You know how when you like Why the do you thing? think that would bother oh, me? No. I didn't want to keep talking to you. Did you tell your aunties? You tell your aunties that he hearted no. it? Mm -mm. Why don't we have a message for the aunties right now? Yeah, auntie, listen, anytime y'all want to come give me some of that good pie. I don't know if your pie is better than Taylor's mom's pie. Okay, the bar is set pretty high. But I'm down to do a little sample test. You know what I'm saying? Just came back from a Muslim country where I'm allowed to have more than one wife. Pull up on me. You know? So what are we talking about now? What, what does that have to do nothing, with anything? Nothing. We're talking about pie. Oh, okay. No, it's because you I put... This whole episode. Oh, all right. Yo, Jeffrey Epstein's list is coming. <laughs> you want it? It's not coming, bro. 
You don't Am think I on so? it? <laughs> Son, if, I was, if I was on it, I wouldn't be complaining about this renovation. Yo, <laughs> That's how. Nobody, you know the funny part about Jeffrey Epstein's list? Nobody's going to really give a fuck. I know, man. They timed it perfectly. Because you know why nobody, the, the real reason nobody's going to give a fuck is ain't nobody on the worldwide nigga net going to be on there. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's going to be a bunch of rich motherfuckers that y'all have never probably even heard of. Yo, can you, would you be as upset as Jimmy Kimmel? Yes. Why? Because you know what Aaron, uh, I started to say Aaron Magruder. Aaron, Aaron you know what Aaron, salute Aaron Magruder, my guy. You know what Aaron Rodgers is implying by saying this. Like, why would Aaron Rodgers, let me hear, let, let's listen to this clip, uh, Taylor. Mm -hmm. Why would Aaron Rodgers even get on here and say this shit? Jimmy Kimmel are really hoping that doesn't ah, happen. Please. <laughs> All right. All right. Obviously, a clip from this particular program was run on Jimmy Kimmel's show uh, whenever Aaron brought up the, the list and then. Jimmy mocked him for it. Mm -hmm. Aaron has not forgotten about that, but here we are sitting right in front of that nice bottle of scotch. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I'm waiting to celebrate something. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's been waiting That's for the one. <laughs> okay, so hold on. So That's Jimmy, I didn't even know this part of the context. So Jimmy made started. fun of Aaron on his show mm -hmm. for bringing up the list. Mm -hmm. What was the context of bringing up the list? I didn't see that. Can yeah, we, I didn't see let's that. Let's find that. Cause Jimmy Kimmel, let me read what Jimmy Kimmel said. He said, dear assholes, for the record, I've not met, flown with, visited, or had any contact, whatever, with Epstein. No, will you find my name on any list other than the clearly phony nonsense that soft brain wackos like yourself can't seem to distinguish from reality. Your reckless words put my family in danger. Oh, Keep it shut up. shut up, we will Jimmy. debate the facts further in court. <laughs> no, I'm down with him soon now. Nah, that's so, you, not if you start it. I gotta see what, I gotta also, see. Also, Jimmy see, makes fun context. of people on his show all the time. He I'm, says things that are not true about people in jest on his show all the time. That is what being a comedian is. For him to get his fucking panties in a bunch when Aaron is on a sports show that is a comedic sports show, and he's clearly joking around, and the reason he said he's on that list is because Jimmy was so defensive about the list in the first place. If we get I that clip. Yeah, I, I need more content. I gotta yeah. see what Jimmy's, I gotta see what I gotta see what Jimmy said. Listen, I'm all for suing people in 2020. Oh my God. And I'm gonna tell not you what. Not for jokes, bro. We're not suing for jokes. He's man. not a comedian, though. And you can't yo, Jimmy's a comedian. And see, Aaron Rodgers is not a comedian. And to say this on Pat McAfee's show, Pat McAfee's not a comedian. Nobody's gonna take it as a joke. For him to say, yo, I'm celebrating, I'm, I'm when this list comes out, I'm gonna celebrate. I bet you Jimmy Kimmel's on there, whatever the fuck he said. Like, nah. I need to see the first context. Yeah, you can't if play, you don't started play with me this, like that. Don't cry when he finishes it. Now, if he said something about Aaron being on the list, fair game. What if he said Aaron's a wacko for bringing up the list? And what if he's belittling the list? That's not, I don't think that's worth him saying he possibly is on this. What do you always say? Like, freedom of speech, but you're not free about how people react? Not free to how people that? react? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying, yeah. like, it's. Nah, bro. Let's see. Um, Let me see it. it. Let me see it. You want to just give it to us and you can insert it later? Pat McAfee Chris? already apologized. Pat McAfee, it's New York Times, CNN. Pat McAfee apologizes over rolling Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Kimmel, because he knows that's an easy lawsuit. You can't be saying shit like that because I don't want my motherfucking platform, you know, mentioned in whatever lawsuit you might bring up against uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, oh, and it was on ESPN? Yeah, Pat McAfee showed that. Shit. I mean, I know that, no, but I thought that was just a podcast. I, I mean, didn't know that was actually from the TV show. Do you have the, what's it called, clip? I said clip. You want to yeah, just give play, it to me? Don't play with me about certain shit. I found it. Don't play with me about certain shit. But about that? This one right here? That's a tough one, man. Don't play with me about I, Certain shit, don't play with me about. Let me see. Pat McAfee show. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Needless to say, all this UFO talk has the tinfoil hatters going wild, including Green Bay whack packer Aaron Rodgers, who offered this hot take on the Pat McAfee show. I, I believe that this has been going on for a long time. Interesting uh, timing on everything. There's a lot of other things going on in the world. Did you hear about the Epstein client list uh, about to be released, too? What's that? What are you talking about? There's some files that have, have some names on it that might be uh, getting released pretty soon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Might be time to revisit that concussion protocol, Aaron. That's... <laughs> Needless to say, all this. I don't get it. What Jimmy's saying is, the f Aaron is going, yo, they're going to release some names on the, the, on the list. Mm -hmm. And what Jimmy is saying is that 
we shouldn't care about the list, apparently. Like, we shouldn't... He's belittling the fact that Aaron's like, yo, there's going to release the list. He's saying that he's a tinfoil hat whack packer because he's curious about the names on the most notorious pedophile in history's list. Yeah, I don't understand that because when the list comes out, I'm sure Jimmy Kimmel's writers are going to be all over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if the list comes out this week, he's going to have a million jokes. So then why like to, would he so have... So to dismiss it like that is kind of strange. So the fact he's dismissing it, and then Aaron goes, which I think makes a lot of sense. You made fun of me, called me a tinfoil hat whackpacker, said that I need to get into concussion protocol because I'm curious about a list of names attached to the most notorious pedophile in history. If you were somebody that would dismiss that, maybe it's not the craziest leap to go, you're jokingly go, your name might be on the list. It's not an insane leap to say that. I if I was like, I hope they don't release that list. Uh, anybody who believes in that is just a whack, wacko idiot. Why would you even believe in something like that? You should go on concussion protocol to believe in any, that kind of shit. I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on with you? As a joke. And then for Jimmy to be serious about it. You started this. You called him the whack packer. You called him the concussed dude. You called him someone who's insane for believing or having curiosity in this. He claps back at you with a little fucking jab and then your panties getting your asshole about it? No way. You know dude. why do I say it's okay for Jimmy to do that? Because we live in an era, man, I've been saying this for years. Nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. And did Aaron Rodgers doing that? Because I've seen a million Epstein lists already. I don't know what's real and what's not real. Tell Jimmy not to talk then. Don't bring don't bring his name up. If we joking around and saying things about each other, with you, like don't you bring can't. my name. Hey, some people go to Aaron, hell. Some people, some people go low, some people up. go to hell. You could joke around about me, I'm joking around about you. Yeah. I thought Aaron's joke was like innocuous. It was yeah. a jab. Let me hear it again. Let me hear Aaron again. Go to Aaron's joke. I, it don't sound like a joke to me. Yeah, he kind of like subliminate. Did Jimmy Kimmel's joke or no, Aaron, Aaron's Aaron. joke? list that came out. <laughs> Feels like, feels like <laughs> that's supposed to be coming out soon. That's supposed to be coming out soon. Look, this guy's been it's waiting in his wine people. cellar. Yeah. I've been waiting in my it's wine cellar for this thing. Hiding. A lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping that doesn't come out. Right. Now, he goes, there's a lot of people, including Jimmy, that really uh, hope it doesn't come out. It doesn't mean that Jimmy Kimmel's on partners. it, but the fact that he was dismissing it before, Jimmy's leaping here. Jimmy is dismissing it maybe the ale the allegation could be he's protecting people that are on the list. No, I think I got it now. Go. I, I, I don't think you, I'm, we're just throwing out theory, so it don't matter. Yeah. I think Jimmy Kimmel didn't believe in an Epstein list. I think Jimmy thought that was just a crazy internet conspiracy theory. He's got so be when an he idiot. first heard Aaron bring it up. He was like, ah, this is, uh, you know. But there's always been a list because they were referring to people on the list as John Doe 36 or But no, I've Doe. seen lists that got names on it. Like, I've seen lists that got actual celebrities and people who have been running with that forever. So I think what Aaron was saying just now yeah. was Jimmy is hoping this list doesn't come out. Here's the thing. Because it'll prove that Jimmy was wrong. Because if Jimmy didn't believe in the list to begin with, and he was just dismissing it as a conspiracy. Even better. Perfect. Yeah, that's So what even I, more that's innocent. What I think so was. the fact that he jumps to this conclusion that Aaron is saying that he's on on the list and he's one of these pedophiles and you yeah. put my family in danger. It's like, shut the fuck up. Your family's in danger. You live in a gated community. You walk around with security. How many people outside of Epstein have been touched because of their association? Prince Andrew walking around. Who touched Bill who, Gates walking who around. Epstein? Himself. That's what, that's exactly. That so was, nobody that got was touched. masturbation. <laughs> 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 what what danger is he in? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, why are you yeah, blowing yeah, this yeah. up? Why are you being so sensitive about this? You make fun of a dude. He clasped back at you with something that was barely in it, like a tiny little jab, and now you want to bring in the justice system? You know that's what some I, pussy you shit. You know what I think yeah, happened? Yeah, you know what I think? kids on you. Like, he's insinuating that. Jimmy doesn't want the list to come I out because... Take, I, didn't, I didn't take that as an insinuation. I, that's how I took it. If you say After hearing, this person I, doesn't want the list to come out, why would that person not want it? Because he's on it. I thought it as an insinuation until I heard Jimmy's clip. When I hear Jimmy's clip, I hear somebody who don't believe in the Epstein conspiracy theory list. That's and fair. he thought that was just some bullshit. Mm -hmm. But now that it's actually about to come out, like that's how I'm going to feel mm -hmm. when the UFOs arrive. What, then you're gonna feel like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be like, off of all you motherfuckers, salute to my, 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 my brother DJ Frosty. We debate about this all of the time. Right. Now, when, when the UFOs finally get here, you're gonna be like, I told you I so. I fucking told you so. You and know that, what I mean? And then Frosty's gonna feel like an idiot. Yes. Well, not? Nah, maybe. You know, so I'm not, so <laughs> well, I'm not saying you feel like an idiot, but you understand what I'm saying, where he's obviously fighting for the opposite. Yes. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna tell you what else could have happened here. 
But this is a comedian, bro. Jimmy's a comedian. Like, he had funny sketches back in the day. Offensive funny. sketches. Yeah. Cancelable Hilarious. sketches by today's standards. Yes. Now, he, now when somebody made a joke about him that was a retort, a reaction, he's going, I'm going to sue you? That's some bitch shit. Bro. I don't think that's a reply to a joke either. I think Jimmy Kimmel was replying to his mentions. Meaning... So hit up your mentions, Meaning fam. other people saw what Aaron said and started tweeting Jimmy like, yo, you saw Aaron say that you motherfucking might be on Epstein's list, yada, yada, yada. And he replied to that, which so many people do, by the way, nowadays. This is, this, this is the cost of dismissing the associates of a known rapist. Mm. When you dismiss the associates of a known convicted and you act like it's some tinfoil hat conspiracy, maybe people get a little riled up and upset. Wouldn't you? I agree with you. I think something, I think one thing about this Epstein list, though, at least the ones that they had out last year, it was so many celebrity names on these ho hoax lists. So here's the thing. The, the real list, there are names that are on it, mm -hmm. and the names that are on it are there. Like Bill Clinton, for example, wants his name on it because it vindicates him. Why? Because the list isn't just, hey, here are the people that went to the island. The list is people. The people who use the plane. And he could have flown on the plane prior to any conviction for Epstein. I think in Clinton's circumstances, they never even flew to the island. Allegedly, they, they were flying in Africa or something like that. So there are people that are on the list. RFK Jr. was on the plane. Like, he even came out and saw it. So there are people on the list. Trump is on the list? Trump is on the list. So it's like there are people that are on the list but they were they are vindicated by the circumstances of which they flew in that plane. Well, Trump won't be. I seen Trump do interviews where he was talking about how them parties used to be lit. Crazy. <laughs> with that scene. And he was literally, literally said verbatim, you know, how young the girls were. But he also has, You ever heard those interviews, Chris? Okay. But you've also heard him Say, call them out. Allegedly. Because I don't know if he really said that. He did say that. No, nah, he also called them out. He's like, yo, these guys are up some weird shit. He did? Yeah. I mean, he did. Don't party with me and then say my party was Fuck weird, hey, bro. Uh, this guy, <laughs> I love this Chris is, he Chris is for his people, son. I like that. Yeah, but he quiet, he quiet about other shit. You know what I mean? What are you quiet about, About yo? that man in Bali. He real quiet. <laughs> man in Bali. You Don't know who's that. in Bali. <laughs> oh. Yeah, right? He heard all that shit. You were all that. Oh, later. Later he's loud. Later. You know, keep oh, that same shit. energy, Chris. Chris. Keep that same were, energy, Chris. He was friends with Trump. Say what? He, oh. How do you think I met Trump? <laughs> what I'm saying is keep the same energy with the man in Bali that you do with Trump. You're quick to be like, yo, Trump knew him. Trump was doing all that. Your man got more allegations than Trump. Yeah, he probably didn't get invited. Who? Bali. Who, Trump didn't nah, get invited? Nah, nah, nah. He don't got more allegations than Trump. Bruh. Nah, he don't. Come he on, don't. Son. He don't. He don't got more. Son, than Trump. He lives in Bali, not because he wants to. Nah, nah. He, he was going to Bali before that. He got a resort in Bali. No, no, no. He was going there. <laughs> and he built now he doesn't come back. He built a resort in Bali. Let nature sort out everything. Yeah. Let God do what He going to do. Tell Jimmy Kimmel not to care anymore. <sighs> I can't tell him not to care about that. If he took it in that way, I just don't know why. He reacted to what Aaron Rodgers said in that way because I don't hear it now. Now that I saw the context with what Jimmy said and I hear what Aaron said, I don't take it as he's saying, yo, Jimmy is on the list. I just take it as he's saying, Jimmy's hoping the list don't come out. But I just think Jimmy wants to be right. I'm like that with all types of shit. If I say some shit and I believe it, and he I don't want to be right. That's right. As soon as I hear, like, no, that shit did happen, I, fuck. I pivot. Yeah. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> what the fuck is you talking about? I told you, I, didn't I tell you that from the beginning? I told you this shit wasn't what it was, but you fucking ran with this other shit. Why, why would I do that? Do what? Run with this other shit. Because nobody wants to be wrong. Do you realize we live in an era right now where people get on social media, COVID breaks out, everybody's a motherfucking scientist. Palestine, Israel happening, everybody's a geopolitical expert. Everybody knows all this type of shit on social media. Nobody just wants to admit they fucking wrong. Mm. Nobody just wants to say, I don't know. And we live in this era where people just give opinions, and for whatever reason, people just run with opinions as facts. Or maybe that's just our mind state that we think people are running with things as facts. Maybe people just run in headlines. 
That's like, the other thing. Like, if I say something on this podcast, you say something on this podcast, and somebody turns it into a headline, that don't mean it's a factual statement. That just means somebody's running with what we said on this podcast. Exactly. Like, yeah, facts can also be misleading. By the way, who says it's a fact? It's just some shit we said. Yeah. I just said some shit, and people ran with it. I gave my opinion, people ran with it. You give your opinion, people run with it. Yeah. Like, why? Maybe it's our fault for looking at these headlines and taking it for more than what it is, other than a statement. Yeah. But I think it's because of the social media engagement and the fact that people are able to respond to what folks say that it turns a lot of these things into bigger conversations that don't need to be, man. A lot of this shit is just small talk. A lot of this shit don't need to be big issues, Dear man. Dear asshole, for the record, I have not met, flown with, visit, or contact whatsoever. Like, what a Karen-ass message. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That is dear, a little crazy. That dear is, that, asshole. That is, this was a comedian no, who did that, blackface sketches yeah, is, is now crazy. tweeting, Dear asshole, for the record, I have not met, flown with, visited, or had any contact whatsoever with Epstein, nor will find my name on any list other than the clearly phony nonsense that soft brain wackos like yourself can't seem to distinguish from oh. reality. He's saying the list don't exist. But by the way, that could be something. In his that, tweet. No, 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 no. Other than the no, phony no. nonsense, soft brain. But that's my point. Remember, I was talking about all of the fake lists that were out last year. So he thinks that it's the fake might, list. He might have really been on one. Yeah. He might have been on a fake ass list. I've seen some names that's on them lists. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, like, but it's only because social media is having this. Man, it's, it's something about social media and celebrities now. Mm. It's like they, they are just hanging celebrities up like pinatas and whacking the fuck out of them. Wait, what, what are you saying? What's, who? Just to see what comes out. Everybody's doing that. Like who? What you mean? Like who? 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 What you mean as far as celebrity? Yeah. Name them. Everybody gets a turn. That's why I keep trying to tell motherfuckers like, bro, everybody going to get a turn on that goddamn whipping post at some point. Mm. Bro. I don't care if you black, white, if you are rich. If you got some type of fame, you got some type of celebrity, motherfuckers really cannot wait to tear you down at some point. Oh, that's true. That's, that's just, just a, in, in, nature. And it's been like this since the beginning of time. It's yeah. nothing new. Yeah. It, way before there was social media, there was tabloids and all types of other shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that now it's just really, really, really more accessible to at somebody and get them to respond. I was having a conversation with, because um, I, 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 I hated what you niggas did to T.D. Jakes. Over the holidays, like well, y'all I'm, niggas, I, that's that's. What, I'm not gonna lie, man. That's what made me say, man. Y'all can have the worldwide nigga day, okay? Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> what? If you want to be the king of the worldwide nigga net, congratulations. What is that? You can thing have that shit. Saying what is that? The internet. Oh, for niggas. Yeah, yeah. There's a search. There's a black Twitter. Yeah. And then there's the nigga net. I, it, Bishop T.D. Jake should have never responded to y'all motherfuckers. There's no way in hell I'm responding to a random ass TikTok. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, there's no way. And and for everybody on social media to to run towards a random ass TikTok, even when you hear the story, they want to believe it. The story didn't make any sense. Did you hear the story? How the shit started? I didn't didn't know all the details. Somebody got on TikTok and said Cassie gave her phone to the FBI. Yeah. And then they got they she gave Kim Porter's burner phone to the Mm. FBI, and there was emails and shit saying that. T.D. Jakes and Diddy used to have orgies with little boy. What the fuck, man? How do people? What what makes people even want to believe that? Do you think that? this is a? And this is this is all allegedly. Do you think this is a Diddy team misinformation campaign? No, I think that. For would example, be. you put out you leak a bunch of fake stories that are surrounding the case. Once the people find out that they're fake, now they can't believe anything around the case, and they lose interest because they don't know what is fact and fiction. Mm. This is a common technique that's used. I, I that that would be a great technique, man. But man, to me, that goes into another point that I've been thinking about over the holidays: how motherfuckers really care about the court of public opinion more than they care about the court of law, well, or more they care about. Sometimes civil the court of public opinion is what decides. It really, it really doesn't, man. <laughs> and the reason I say it really doesn't is because if you are facing criminal charges or you're being accused of criminal acts, or if you're facing some type of civil charges rooted in criminal acts, these motherfuckers on, in the court of public opinion can't save you? In no. no in, in no way, shape, or form. No, but they can sway the jury. They can sway public perception. And with that swaying of public perception, there might be an easier conviction. The reason I say I disagree with that is because these juries... Now, I have thought to myself... 
Because, you know, they always tell juries, don't watch the news, don't do this, don't do that. It's impossible, impossible. to do nowadays, right? But one thing I will say about juries, juries are privy to way more evidence than motherfuckers on social media. That's true. And that's what happened in the Tory Lanez Megan Thee Stallion case. That's Anybody true. who was actually following that case and looking at what they were being presented in court, you're like, there's no way Tory's, Tory's going to beat this. Yeah. And I didn't understand why, you know, he, Tory or his team was doing all of that on social media. Yeah. Knowing what he was facing in court. The court of public opinion can't do anything for you. That's why when motherfuckers run to live streams and go on Instagram live when they're faced with accusations, who you try to prove this to? Hmm. These people online, by the way, you're never gonna change their mind. Your, your audience that fucks with you, they gonna rock with you. But all of the people that's against you, they're going to be on your head. Mm. Nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. And if they already don't fuck with you, they're going to ride with anything that's against you. Does, so who are you trying to explain shit to? Well, that's the thing. It's like, do you try to take away a thing that they would use to ride against you? So, yeah, the people that don't like you, the people that are bitter, the people that resent you are going to believe anything negative about you because they want to. Right? right? It makes them feel better about themselves. But do you try to remove the amount of things that they can believe that are negative about you if they are fake? No, because all they're going to do is take what you said on your live stream or your Instagram live and use it against you. Mm. You really, That's the era we're in. Like, they're they going to they go back and pull up old interviews. They're going to pull up old tweets. They're going to pull up all... all they're going to pull up anything that can build the case against you. And as soon as you get on Instagram live explaining yourself, they're going to say, oh... That person's just trying to get in front of it. Uh, oh, you know, that person is just trying to change the narrative. It's like, man, let these motherfuckers think whatever. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're dealing with some shit that's in court. Mm -hmm. Like, who cares? The only, person you, the only people that you should be trying to convince is that court. The court of law. Yeah. I agree with you, but for T.D. Jakes... I feel like he needed to speak out because Why? that that one was running wild and so what? people were believing that. Let and if you have like a congregation, they want. No, yeah, but you I have a congregation and like if you lose, if your congregation loses faith in you and shit like that, I think your congregation knows you. This is a man that's been doing this work for fifty years. Yeah, but we think we know everybody until an allegation comes out. Man, fuck, that's not even an allegation. That's just a dumbass gossip. What they say rumor. about him? But that's what exactly most what I just said. It was a. It was literally was a random person on TikTok said what though that she. Got, I don't know if she said she had inside sources, but she said that Cassie gave her phone to the FBI, and then gave Kim Porter's burner phone to the FBI. And there was some type of emails and all kind of other stuff saying Bishop T.D. Jakes and Diddy and all of them participate in orgies with little boys. I'm not giving that shit no energy. I'm not giving that shit no response back if I'm T.D. fucking Jakes. Like, why? And, and look, and what's that? He look, look at that headline right there. What does it say? Here's why black internet is dragging T.D. Jakes despite his denials of salacious rumors. I'm not responding to that bullshit on the worldwide nigga net. Remember back in the day when celebrities, <laughs> you remember how it'd be on the front page of the, uh, the National Enquirer, such and such is pregnant by Sasquatch. Yeah. Uh, such and such. yeah. They didn't respond to that shit in the tabloids. Yeah. Treat that shit like the tabloids now. I'm not responding to that bullshit for what? Mm. Why? Mm. Why? I mean, I think when he responded, it kind of killed the noise. No, he, like made the story, he made the story bigger. But it, it inflated it and then killed it. Yeah. So, like, more people found out about what the accusation was, and then they're like, oh, this is bullshit. But if he doesn't say anything at all, like, for example, the NBA player Josh Giddy, who was, like, accused of having sex with that girl who was underage or whatever. Wild like last name to be accused of that type of <laughs> shit. The Giddler. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Wild, bro. So, so he's refused to talk about it, which confirms in all of our minds that he had sex with her. Why? God damn. Bruh. If you did it, you would just that? say it. If you didn't do it, they I'm asked like, him straight I up never slept with no little kid. They're like, yo, okay, right? He's like, I don't want to talk about that. I can't talk about that right now. Now, I don't know. Is if, it a criminal case? No, I don't know if it was illegal based on the age of consent in the state or something like that. So, but it was still like, they're asking, did you sleep with this girl? And he's going, I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm not going to talk about this at this moment, right? So it's like, well, if you didn't, you would just say, no, this is ridiculous. Because it's the easiest answer ever. Now, I understand you're saying, you're, what you're saying about like inflating things, but I think when there are fake rumors about you out there that are potentially hurting you, I don't think this hurts T.D. Jakes, but if they were, and you have the ability to address them and cut them out, 
I think. In this era, you'll be doing that shit all day, bro. No, that's true. That's true. And, and don't get me wrong. You are you don't do it to every single thing. But, like, for example, with the, the Louis C.K. thing is a perfect example. Louis C.K. came out and apologized. He wrote an apology. Now, his apology didn't acknowledge what he was accused for and what people thought he did. But he got accused by multiple women, right? Of, of bullshit. People thought that he was out there right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, was yeah. not in because a power position. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, they thought a completely different thing. So when he put out an apology, all those people that knew nothing about the case, right, thought he was apologizing for what they thought he did, not what actually happened. Yes. So if I'm him, I'm going, no, nah, this is absolute bullshit. No, 100%. No. A lot of people ask me, no, nah, none of this happened. This is absolute bullshit. The fact that he even acknowledged it with an apology. But think, but think about that though, right? So for the people who thought Louis C.K. was people, which he was not. Which he wasn't. But if you come out and you say you apologize for jerking off or whatever it was. With consent. With con whatever it was. Those people online will be like, you think he was just jerking off in front of women? You don't think he was doing more? That's, it's a, it's a I'm not apologizing. Rules. I'm just going, yo, I asked him. They said I could. What more do you want me to do? Oh, so he explained the story, basically. No, that's what he should have done. Is that what he did? No, his apology is like, I understand that there was a power dynamic in certain one of these things, and it just sounds like oh, you're so going... He, okay, so he's not he aware... Could, it sounds like he's confirming... So he's not aware of what people were, were thinking and saying. He might have been detached from that. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it, yo. I, I'm telling you. Like, you got to let people think whatever nowadays. He, I, I, I'll take the Jay-Z approach to this shit all day. Jay, there's been so much rumors and bullshit about... Jay Z and Beyonce over the years, they don't. I think you do nothing. get. That's very true. I think you and do. And then he's had some wild shit. shit, like wild, salacious shit that the you even on YouTube now they, they what? human sacrifice, all type of stupid shit. I'm not acknowledging none of that dumbness, man. But also, that's not that bad. Like T D. Jakes getting his cheeks clubbed would be way worse <laughs> than Jay Z being in the Illuminati. Right? <laughs> now and think about. That's the it. worst part. How the fuck y'all make my path to a bottom? That's a big bottom. Come on, man. That's a hippo bottom. Don't do him like that, yo. <laughs> At least a power bottom. Like. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> not a soft that bottom. That shit pissed me off so bad, yo. I was like, man, fuck these niggas. Yo. I said, God, uh, what's up, man? Now it's time. Let's go. <laughs> I said, God, it is time for the motherfucking rapture. Let's clear this shit the fuck up, man. What we got to do? Um. Huh? I'll start building the arc right now. Y'all yeah. be out here with a tinfoil hat on, building the arc. Y'all be like, man, Charlemagne done lost it. And I'll be like, nope, the fucking rain is coming, nigga. <laughs> I'm sick of y'all motherfuckers so much. Mm -mm. Do you think T.D. Jakes would, would show up? Show up to what? To the arc, and he'd be on your arc. With T.D. Jakes, what? <laughs> when he go on your arc, you need two of each species, right? Man, shut up, man. What animal, if T.D. Jakes was an animal, what animal would he be? What? He would be a hippopotamus. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bishop T.D. Jakes. I ride with Bishop T.D. Jakes, man. That man has given us so much. Yeah, you do ride him. He does. <laughs> and you know what else is crazy? You know what else is crazy? They announced that. What? Hold on, hold on. Let's look. Let's look. Nah, free T.D. Jakes is fucked up. What you mean free him? You see how shit starts? You see how rumors nah, fucking start? No, I mean that in a good way. Free him. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, free him from look, the rumors, right? Free, free him from, from the rumors, bro. It's fucked up. Now, you're not a boss. Him. You're not a top. You're Bishop T.D. Jakes. He's working one on... One of the greatest bishops alive right now. Without question. He's working on projects in Miami and Atlanta that are based on a residential community built in Dallas. So he's building uh, affordable apartments in all of those, in all of those regions. He's, he's with uh, Miami Real Estate Developer, New Urban Development. And this came out before that shit. Wow. So that got announced, and then somebody comes on TikTok with that bullshit. My whole point is, when did we start giving... Random people on TikTok, that kind of power. I don't think we Always. give random people. I think that we give, like you said, like if people are people jealous, like the, people are envious. And people like a good story. Yes. yes. And we, we want to see the righteous fall. Do you understand? I've been doing shit like this for how long? Since I was 16 years and? old. And I got it. I've been making up stories, planting them. Right? You know what I'm saying? I used to do this shit in Monk's Corner just to see how far it would go. And? They got it too easy, <laughs> all right? I didn't have fucking TikTok, all right? I had Yo, stories thank God you that would TikTok. go all around the town. You would be a fucking menace. Yo, to, listen, I had stories that would go all around the town that like they would what? come back to me, and I like forgot what? I said the shit. Like what? Like I'd be what? like, yo, did you hear about such and such? Yeah. <laughs> right? And I'm like, 
Oh, shit. I told you that story, right? When I got the email that said I had chlamydia or something like that? No. You got that email. It was like, yo, this is an anonymous email or anonymous call. <laughs> There's a company that will notify you that a partner you're with, with had a chlamydia anonymously and you have chlamydia so you should go get that taken care of or something like that. And I'm fucking feeling horrible. I, I don't even know if I should tell my parents. I don't know what the fuck. So I call my best friend. I go, Jamil, I go, yo, bro, I got chlamydia, man. I don't know what the fuck I should do. Like I had this shit for three days. I don't even know what to do. I'm freaking out. And he goes, oh, yeah, I sent that in with your name. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Who are you sending it to? <laughs> you send it as an anonymous partner saying, oh, I had sex with this person Man, and I have it, so they that got shit. it. <laughs> he let me sell that shit for three days. I forgot I Good had chlamydia. Joke. Good joke. I walked joke. around for three days. You got to own that shit. You got to do it. That's what I like to do. You say it and walk away. That's what you do. Let that shit simmer, man. All I'm simply saying is these motherfuckers here got it too easy, yo. That shit should not be okay. Shit is not okay. And we live in an era right now. It's not okay that it's too easy? Is that your point? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what you're saying. What you're saying is if it was harder, it'd be all right. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it shouldn't be that. No. It shouldn't be that easy to number one lie yeah. about some shit. Anymore. And it shouldn't be that easy for people just to grasp it and run with it. But I'm yeah. telling you, the only reason they're grasping it and running with it is because they already don't like these people in the first place. Of course, place. Yes. Motherfuckers is miserable. Yes. They always looked at certain people and been like, ah, man, I don't like what that person over there doing. They getting too much money or they getting too much this. They got too and much they can't that. hate they on them because they look like a hater. So you need a story like, you know, you're right. getting your asshole busted open in order for you to come out there and speak on and it. You know how you know what you said is exactly true? Because when a story like this comes out, motherfuckers start talking about all kinds of shit that don't got nothing to do with the story. I believe that shit because I ain't never bought into what this person was doing because of this mm -hmm. and because of that and this and that. That shit don't got nothing to do with him being potentially getting his cheeks. I don't even like saying that shit. That yo, so who, yo son, who had to tell him? Because I don't know if he's on TikTok like that, right? So <laughs> who had to... He got a flock. I'm just saying, but who in the flock raised their hand and was like, yo. <laughs> well, yo I'll, I'll, I'll say you. this. I'll say this. How, whoever, you think, how you think they told him? You so think I, they I think, I don't know. Whoever was, told him to respond. Mr. Jakes. Whoever told him to respond, I'll put that person on probation or something. Because that was not a good, I don't think he should have said nothing. I'm not, how would you approach him if you saw this rumor gaining steam online? I wouldn't say shit. It's nothing to say. No, but that's your boy. Everybody's saying that he's getting his, you know. If he says something to me about it, I'll look at the bishop and I said, Bishop, don't worry about what's happening on the worldwide nigga net. Okay? And when I say nigga, I ain't even just talking about black. I'm just talking about low vibrational nigga shit. You can have it. Don't mention my name in those circles. I don't want to be my name coming out your nigga mouth. Y'all going to be miserable by your goddamn selves, but, man. For example, your boy, right? Who? No, I'm just saying, your, your, your leader... Who? T.D. Jakes. He's not my leader. Not your leader. I'm saying yeah, if you're yeah, in the yeah, flock, yeah. hypothetically, you're in the yeah. flock, and there is a vicious rumor that your leader is getting his balloon knots stretched on a regular basis, what do you do? More than likely, I, mean, I'm, I, didn't, I don't know if this happened, but more than likely, I'm sure people from his congregation got online and defend him. But do you tell him? I'm sure somebody had to say something to him. Because if he's trending... Then they're going to know. Yeah, yes. somebody comes to you and say, yo, you're trending online. Why am I trending online? Because they say you're doing X, Y, and Z. It's like, come on, bro. Yeah. You know? And what he said... I mean, I liked his statement. Play his statement, Taylor. For what he responded with in church on um, that Sunday. I liked what he said, but I would I will not admit. waste time on a lie. He's right. Truth is more important or something. He's right. It's right there. Some of you logged in or come in out of concern. Some of you come in to hear what I'm going to say. All of you who expect me to address a lie, you can log off. I wouldn't have gave him that. <laughs> I wouldn't have gave him nigga that. I will not use this sacred day in this sacred pulpit to address a lie when I have a chance to preach a truth. On Christmas? Mm -hmm. God damn. On Christmas, I man. I stand straight up, head up, back straight, and Ooh. preach the unadulterated, infallible word of God. Fucking Christmas. Because that is what the pulpit is for. 
He there to talk about the baby in the manger. Y'all want to talk about the bottom in the manger. So you can stop dragging people and arguing with people and fighting and just log off. All you do is just hit the button. I'll never forget Trick Trick said that right shit there. one time, man. Trick Trick said, Log off. this was years ago, Trick Trick looked at his phone and Trick Trick said, as long as I turn this motherfucker off. Nothing's happening. That, it, it, yeah. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? I'm not addressing none of that shit. Let them have it, man, because nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. If that's what motherfuckers need to do to be entertained all day long, let them go do it. Like That shit is never going to stop. Yeah. There's always going to be rumors. There's always going to be lies. There's always going to be in the window. By the way, some of that shit that you see about people may or may not be true, but guess what? It will all come out. Mm. If it is, and that's when y'all can have y'all fun. But to just be running with this shit, that shit is whack, man. I agree. Let's pay some bills, Taylor. Let's pay some bills. And then we Taylor. need to know the memes of the month. I like that. I like that he added his back straight up. Damn right. <laughs> Let y'all know. Damn right. <laughs> Ain't no bottom. <laughs> You see how the fuck y'all did that? I ain't even seen, you know what I'm saying? Who thinks that? Why I was thinking that? That's what I'm saying. But that's how a story keeps going. That's how a story keeps going. Bishop said he ain't no bottom. He keeps his, he keeps said, his back straight up. My back straight. Said, nah, fuck he, out of here. He's saying none of them dudes could bend his back. Man, <laughs> none of them dudes get him the arch. These niggas so much. God <laughs> damn, they all. You, you think you got a good arch, or you think you're more of a turtle shell? If I was getting my back, my cheeks blown out? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't I, I, I don't think I can handle that at my old age. So you would curl up? Oh, yeah. A little cat cow, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah you can't throw it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw um, it back. I have to learn one of them fucking yoga poses. I'm not learning that shit. From um, Russell. <laughs> 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 oh, Charlotte, don't do that. Don't do that. Sorry. Yo, Russell need you know a bra. You know the memes they gonna do Yo, right don't now. Russell need a bra? I'm tired of seeing his saggy tits in his shirts, oh, brother. Man, he's 77 years old, Yeah, man. but put a bra. <laughs> Listen, prize picks. Yes, sir. Prize picks are uh, the most fun. I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season, and now I can play during basketball season, too. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Prize Picks is bringing your gifts early this year with the 12 days of Picksmas. Starting December 14th, there will be a new promotion every day for new and existing customers. The daily promotions will range from payout boost to discounted projections. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you could turn $10 into 250 with just a few taps. Now, go to prizepicks.com slash idiots and use code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash idiots and use code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Guys, uh, um, do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account? You're doing a renovation too, and you have no idea where it's going. Well, I know. It's all those subscriptions. Think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps, it's endless. I'm guilty of this. So I use Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on. It was eye-opening. And I had them cancel the ones I didn't want anymore. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, I can cancel with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get a refund for the last couple of months that was wasted and negotiate lower bills for you by up to 20%. So all you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. It is that simple. Rocket Money is over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 per year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. That's rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the show. 
Jeffrey Epstein documents unsealed. Oh, you want to do some church announcements? You got any church announcements? Yes, sir. At all. Yo, um, the Life Tour, Chicago, thank you so much, man. We're coming to Boston next. We added a third show. We just added another, a fourth show in San Francisco. We added a second show in Phoenix. Those tickets are up right now. Go get those immediately. Um, we've added another show in Dallas. We're coming to Atlanta, Nashville, Charlotte, bunch of other cities, all the cities, theandrewschultz.com. Go get those. Thank you so much for selling out the shows at MSG. Thank you so much for selling out the forum. I really appreciate y'all. The Life Tour, I will see you guys out there. Theandrewschultz.com. Um, go to blackeffect.com. Uh, go get some merchandise, man. We got the Black Effect t-shirts up there. We got the Black Effect hats by Mitchell and Ness. Uh, make sure you go to Audible. Get everything we got via SBH Productions, the latest projects we put out. Uh, Unleashed for Love with Alicia Renee and um, Broke Down Profits. Starring Jonathan Majors, Brian Tyree Henry, Dasha Polanco, to name a few. Uh, Invisible Generals by my man Doug Melville is out right now on my book imprint, uh, Black Privilege Publishing via Simon & Schuster. Um, I got another book coming out in a couple of months, too. You do? Well, I'm, I'm working on my third book now, but I, I, we have another book coming out from my uh, imprint in a couple of months. I don't think I can announce it yet, though, but yes. So, yeah, man, just support everything that we're doing. Thank you very much. Um, it says the documents are filings. Uh, it says they haven't... It says CNN is reviewing the documents right now, but it says the documents are expected to include nearly 200 names, including some of Epstein's accusers, prominent business people, politicians, and potentially more. This is what I don't like about stories like this, though. It says... Um, it says, many of the alleged victims and associates have given public interviews and have already been identified in the media. Inclusion in the newly unredacted documents is not an indication of wrongdoing or lawbreaking. That's what I was just saying. I just know, but, but look, how, look, look, what is, look at the headline. Right? Matter of fact, all the people whose names you'll see there have chosen not to have their name redacted. So what it means is the names that you read are probably the ones that are proven innocent. The internet isn't that smart. Oh, it's called the internet? I thought you were saying none. <laughs> the nigger net Jesus is not Christ, that, that just smart. Hit. With the R, okay. it was that strong. <laughs> but, but it's not. I know. I nobody's going go, to see this fine print inclusion in the newly unredacted documents is not an indication of wrongdoing or lawbreaking. Everybody whose name is on that list, Everybody including some of the victims, <laughs> they're going to say are fucking pedophiles. Everybody Not realizing that some of the people up. on there are actual victims. Watch. watch. Nobody's gonna, nobody has the, nobody is going to sit back and be like, well, you know, just because they're on the list doesn't I mean, mean it is crazy wrong. we don't know who's on the island, right? Can we just acknowledge that? Where's the moment? island? Zanzibar. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Where's it's, the island, Chris? It's in the Caribbean. It's Virgin Islands. <laughs> nah, hey, come on, Chris. <laughs> Chris lob that Island. shit up right I there. I know, man. Yeah. I'm not going for that low hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris is so crazy. Yo, Chris said, that was low hanging fruit, Chris. Island. Some yeah. people would say that fruit was not ripe. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Man, that is sick. What do you mean? Man, that's some sick shit, what do you yo. Mean? That's sick. What do you mean? To have that type of operation going down at the U.S. Virgin Islands, yo? I mean, they're going there for that reason, right? That's some sick shit, man. So none of the names But how the released. fuck do we not have one name? How the fuck do we not have one person that was on the island? Like, that, we... We have confirmation that there is sex trafficking. She's locked up for it. He, we believe, uh, 100% is, I don't know if he's convicted of it because he's dead, but he was going to be convicted of it. So we know for a fact that there is a sex trafficking operation going on, yet we don't have one single person that's confirmed to have been part of it. Maybe because... Isn't that weird a little bit? Well, maybe because, well, no, that just shows you how powerful the people on this list are. So then maybe we should look at the list and maybe Jimmy Kimmel should shut the fuck up. What's going to happen when people see the list? They'll Nothing. get arrested and they'll go to jail. No, they're not. They'd have been arrested already. Why wouldn't they be arrested? Because of how powerful they are, probably. So you're saying it's R, 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 just because you're on the list to your point means that you participated in any of that bullshit. But the, there were people that did. How I mean, we, there are these women how do we out know here the difference, saying, though? Say again? How do we know the difference? Because I haven't heard any women talk about who they slept with at the island. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, they like, did. They called it. Prince the one Andrew. shorty called out Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew. Uh, yeah, I remember Prince Andrew. And he's still yeah, out he's there still walking around free. He's still a prince. Yeah. Well, he's also not from here, though. So, But shouldn't they handle that shit out there? I don't know how the laws work. I'm pretty sure I mean, human I, I, like, I sex know, trafficking know. isn't legal out there. But he's also the king, right? Like, no, prince. prince. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what the fuck? Like I said, that shows how powerful these people are. You know what I mean? Like, like it's probably some very powerful people on this list. And... Case of Rah, Like, what are you? What are, what are people going to do? Arrest the people that are on the list. Never happen. I mean, it's, and then I think that we should be able to go. This is ridiculous that this hasn't happened. It'll never happen, man. Like, this is America does not know how to punish the powerful and the privileged. Well, maybe if the list gets out, the justice system will crumble, crumble under the pressure of uh, public uh, scrutiny. <sighs> it's not going to happen. And, and, and if and, we all knew that there were people that went to the island, you don't think that we would be going crazy? No, because because you know what's so interesting. Uh, <laughs> The people that folks think are powerful and the people that folks think are really controlling things, it's not the motherfuckers y'all think. It ain't these celebrities, y'all. I know y'all want to believe that these motherfuckers that make records and sing and dance for a living have this powerful influence over the world. No. They really don't. They have powerful influence over their audience that might listen to their shit. But I'm talking about the people who actually move. True power. And shake things and shape this world. You don't even know who they are. Mm. And, and it's probably names on this list that we'll see that we've never seen before in our lives that are probably some of the most powerful humans that have ever walked the face of this earth. So let's find them and put them in jail for what they did. I don't, I don't see it happening. I feel like it would have, it would have happened already. Yo, Jeffrey, th think about this, right? Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Allegedly. To avoid having to deal with this shit. Now, Allegedly. Now, let's, let's look at the conspiracy theory. Jeffrey Epstein got killed because people didn't want him to flip. So what does that tell you? He not only got killed, al allegedly, nobody gave a fuck. Nobody. Jeffrey I mean, Epstein, we care. Jeffrey we want, Epstein committed we want, suicide. We want them to have justice. People took that story and ran with it. That's it. Fuck the, no investigation, no nothing. He just hung himself in a cell, and everybody kept it moving. All I'm simply saying is those powers that be, that's probably on this list, above the law. Are all the girls that are doing the accusations, are they not allowed to talk or something? Like, why isn't every news publication bringing them on? Hmm. Are they worried they're going to get sued by the powerful people? Get sued? Killed? Who knows? I'm just saying, like, these are... Whoever is on this list is probably literally some of the most powerful people yeah. we've ever encountered. We're going to start Googling names and be like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, that, that's why... I, I don't know, man. I don't know. The fact that this list is out and it says CNN is still reviewing it like there's not, like you said, there's not, there's not one name already. Yeah, how do we get that? Like, how long ago this list came out? And there's not one name? Come on, man. Court documents naming Jeffrey Epstein's associates on CNN. This is ABC News. It says more than 150 John and Jane Doe's. And these articles are mad short. Okay, now this one's, okay, we said powerful. Talk to me, talk All to right. me. This is uh, Business Insider. The names of more than 170 Jeffrey Epstein associates were just revealed in until court documents. Here's what we know. Powerful associates like Bill Clinton, which we knew, Prince Andrew, Glenn Dubin, I don't even know who that is, and John Luke Brunel are in the documents. I don't even, I don't even know who that is. You ever heard of these people? I'm looking at this one too. What do you see? Former President Clinton, who ABC has uh, learned as identifies Doe 36, has mentioned more than 50 of the redacted filings, according to the court records. Some of those sealed redacted entries are focused on an effort by Gouffre's lawyers in mid-2016, first reported in ABC News, to subpoena the two-term Democratic president for deposition testimony about his relationship with Epstein. Glenn Dublin. Let's see who this is. American billionaire hedge fund manager and the principal of Dublin and Company's LP, a private investment company. You see what I'm saying? Vera Wang. How much is his net worth? What's his net worth? Damn, he sold a stake in the company for 1.3 billion. Naomi Campbell. Billion. God damn. 
What you looking at? Oh, we knew Naomi was on it. Thor Bjorn Yagland. Thor was on there? Thor. God. Robert Kennedy Jr. God of Thunder. Sergey Brin, the co the Google co-founder. What are you watching? What are you tell, cite your sources? Intelligencer. Intelligencer. According to a court filing, Epstein advised Brin from 2004 to 2007, including guidance on how to set up tax shelter, tax saving trust for Brin's kids, called a grant or retained annuity trust. With bankers at J.P. Morgan Chase, Brin became a client to the bank in 2004, following a referral from Epstein and subsequently more than four billion in accounts there. Wow. Here's the thing: if they've already said on CNN that being on this list doesn't mean uh, you committed a crime or anything like that, what what's going to happen? Yikes! William Burns, what do you think, Chris? CIA director. Mm. The CIA director? William Burns. The documents indicate that Epstein had three scheduled meetings in 2014 with Burns, who was at that point the deputy secretary of state in the Obama administration. They met both in Washington, D.C., New York, per the journal. A lunch was planned in August office, law firm of Steptoe & Johnson in Washington. Epstein scheduled two evening appointments that September with Mr. Burns at his townhouse in the documents show. After one of the scheduled meetings, Epstein planned for his driver to take Mr. Burns to the airport. A longtime diplomat left the State Department in October later that year, became president of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, where he remained until President Biden nominated Burns to run the CIA in 2021. Whoa. I, I don't, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what any of this means. Just these are the people that he was associated with. It doesn't say that they were on the island. But that's my point. So putting all of these names out, like, what is this going, like, what is this all, what is this doing? Well, all these people were um, hanging out with the most notorious pedophile in the world. But he wasn't, he was a pedophile, but what was his day job? Uh, what did he do? I think he had a single client. He managed money for a single client. But he clearly he advised people too, though, from what well, you Maybe he did, did some advice, but maybe that advice was about currying favor with them so that he could... You know, manipulate them. Is it possible that he could be? Ha could he? he could What's the guy's been? name? Who is his client? The guy who owns Victoria's Secret? Ah, uh, yeah, shit. It's um, but that that's one of his many holdings. Uh, yeah, we can look it up. Leon, somebody. And he's he's in Ohio. I don't know, man. I just don't know what 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 do we expect to come come of this? And it feels like it's a big a big I mean, nothing. Burger. Anybody that's doing business with him after he was already convicted. Of his first child sex uh, case. When was that? Um, no, not it's not uh, Marin Waters, another person. Uh, when was the first Epstein conviction? Like, if you're hanging out with him afterwards, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, how is, let's say you were just taking a meeting for some philanthropic endeavors. Mm -hmm. Your team should look up the person that you're taking the meeting with, like uh, they do for everybody, and then go immediately afterwards, oh, this person has been convicted of a sex crime. We're not taking this meeting. Um, Jesus Christ. He, he committed suicide too? Les Wexner. Les That's Wexner. Who is this person that they say committed suicide? Everybody around them, bro. Wexner Come on. In 1993, Raymond died by suicide after jumping off the Golden State Bridge in San Francisco. Yeah. These motherfuckers, boy. This, yep. And the secrets that they be tying. Yep. With. Jesus Christ. Cheaper to delete her. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's what they do. These people are crazy. <laughs> They're crazy. <laughs> Let's do some uh, by by any means necessary. <laughs> Man, this shit was so fucking funny, yo. Whatever. You know I'm a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter, but goddamn, this shit was funny. Man. Whatever. You see the picture of Jada Pinkett Smith, man. You look like Fat Joe or something. Yo. What? Who are the Olympic gold medalists, yo? <laughs> like, who, who are the Olympic gold medalists? Go. Who are the people that have lost the most weight because of Olympic? Like, who are the biggest, most notable, so noticeable weight loss That's people great, that we've seen? That's a great. Who? Uh, who lost the most? Who lost weight? the most weight? That's what we need. I need social media since y'all always want to be in people's shit. Let's do the Olympic. Gold medalist. I want to know who's Olympic gold, who's Olympic silver, who's Olympic bronze. You don't even got to give me a big list. Just give me three. <laughs> Who is the Olympic gold medalist, Olympic silver medalist, Olympic bronze medalist? Wait, is medalist? Fat Joe on Olympic? Nah, Fat Joe ain't on no Olympic. 
Randy Jackson been lost weight though. Randy Jackson had lost weight way before. Yeah, we need like the new ones. Yeah, who's the new people? Who's the celebrity? Who's admitted to being on Olympic? I know Tracy Morgan did. Oprah did. What's crazy is the people that are still fat. Are st and on it. Like who? Like, nah, but just Up the be, dosage. Like, why would you still be fat? Okay, when stars have spoken about it. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Oprah Winfrey. Kiki Palmer was on Olympic? Oh, let me read the article, yo. One of the hottest topics of the type 2 diabetes of this fellow. There's no way Kiki Palmer was on no goddamn Olympic, yo. Okay, Oprah. Sharon, what does Sharon have to lose? Sharon, yeah. I mean, she's going she through it. She's already thin. Heather Gay. I don't even know who that is. Who's Heather Gay? I don't know. Garcel. Garcel Bouva. She's on Real Housewives. None of these people were big beforehand, yo. I need really to see. Right. I need. I need to see some real Olympic success stories, yo. You know what I mean? Tracy Morgan. Tracy didn't seem that big to yeah, me. Yeah, Tracy either. wasn't that big. Who are these? I got. Amy Schumer was on Olympic. I need to see before and after pictures. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to see before and after pictures. I don't. <laughs> you, you, I'm serious. I need to see before and after pictures, yo. Stassi, uh, is that the friend of? Uh... I don't know who that is. Keep going, Taylor. The Kardashians? Wait, she got bigger after? Oh, come on, yeah. <laughs> Amy Schumer slams celebs lying about Olympic use. No, I can see it. No, 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 I see it, I see it. I can see it. Okay. Is she an Olympic gold medalist? Nah. Silver? Nah. Bronze? Nah, there's got to be like a huge... Yeah, I need to know the... Who was the Big Mac, yo? Who was the 300-pounder that lost weight, yo? I don't know none of these people. Anthony Anderson? Oh, wow. I think it's pointless to do Olympic if you got one of them heads that ain't going to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because a lot of the people... I'm not even... A lot of people have, have like, like Anthony Anderson, Amy Schumer, they have heads... <laughs> that aren't gonna lose weight. Right? They, but you know what I'm saying? They don't know that. But yeah, but you kind of do. Like you know your body type. Like you lost weight before. It's not the first time that they've lost weight. Sometimes you have a head because most of the time when you lose weight, the first place you see it is in people's face. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's true. Some people will lose it in their body, but still have that head, that fat head, and it yeah. looks it looks it looks strange. <laughs> it's deceiving, you're saying. It's deceiving. You yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah. that's the first thing you see. Like we pulled up pictures, and you see from the neck up. And you're like, hey, you yeah. know, you know, you're doing those Olympic for no reason. But then when you look at the full frame, you're like, oh, okay, I see where they lost the weight. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you gotta see the bod, eh? I mean, yeah, Julia Fox makes sense. She got so thin. Megan McCain? I definitely ain't seen none of this. Damn, yeah, motherfuckers. No, this is the Epstein list. Man, you guys, up. this is a epic <laughs> list. It was all these girls that were going out there to have sex with young women. It's disgusting. Could you shut up? What up, Taylor? Do some by any means necessary, Taylor. Let's see what we got. See if I give yeah, a what fuck we cooking about any on? of these stories. What we cook? Yo, you think Harvey Weinstein tried to suck Cat Williams' dick for him to be in a movie? That was wild. I mean, there's how Cause if I'm hard, like, because wouldn't you be getting Just your come dick sucked? Come suck up? this dick. Not like, yo, I'll let you be in my movie if I can suck your dick. It's crazy. You a different kind of animal. Yo, that's <laughs> no, crazy, no, you, right? You a different kind of animal if you want to suck dick to put somebody in the movie. That Maybe he just misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he misspoke. Maybe that's not what he meant. But you, you, Wow, boy. Yeah, you got to love sucking suck dick. dick. Hey, man, I want to put you in this movie, but I need to suck your dick first. Maybe, though. Come on, bro. Maybe. I'm telling you, I can see it. You can see what? Like, I think there are male actors who also had to go through what Harvey put people through to get some roles. Duh. And none of them have come out about it. Yeah, but all we've heard about Harvey is just girls, women, that he's done that for roles. He's saying that the men are too embarrassed to admit that they got their dick sucked to be in a movie. Duh. Dude. And by the way, don't get it fucked up. Yeah, both of y'all are absolutely right, but there's powerful women in the business who do that shit too. There's powerful women in the business who take advantage of, you know, their positions and Hell who they yeah. are. And they making these motherfuckers, you know, do something strange for a little bit of change too. Don't get it fucked up. But what if we found out one of those powerful women was like, yo, if I can suck your dick, I'll put you in my movie. I can see that though. But how would we feel you can about see it? it? <sighs> how would we feel about it? Yeah. Movie, please. 
What movie? <laughs> Blue Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blue Beetle, our boy Jolo. It's weird, it's, it's strange, right? Because like, if if a person, if a woman comes to you and a woman says, "Yo, I'll put you in this movie if you let me suck your dick." What if she reverses it? So what? Try the same thing, but get okay, say it for me. What do you mean? What's reverse? You go, huh? So you go, you'll I'll suck your dick if I. No, I'm, I don't like how that's gonna look on camera. They might edit that shit and. <laughs> Have me leaning over to you, be like, "Hey, you know what I mean?" So, what are you saying? Oh, you go. That's what bothers you, not you bending over before <laughs> all the memes they gonna put. <laughs> Anybody making the memes? Uh, <laughs> I, they, I'll suck you. Yo, let me suck your dick, and I'll put you in my movie. Okay, and so wow. So, who, what, what a is woman is going. Let me suck your dick. I'll put you there. This is how that's going to go. But see, that's a that's a question, right? Let me suck your dick. Yes. And I'll put you in this movie. Oh, awesome. So if I let you suck my dick, yeah. that's consent. That's what I'm saying. It's yes immediately. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you found out you're also going to be in a movie and you're like, this is great. I thought I was just coming here to audition. I didn't realize I was going to get my <laughs> dick sucked. Now I'm also going to be in the movie. Like, this is the best case scenario ever. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I saw what Cat Williams said. It's just like, I mean, I can't. I, who am I to dismiss what Cat Williams said? That's but he's also a genius because now I can't wait to go see him on tour because I'm like, please talk about all this shit that you talked about in this move, in this interview. I feel like Cat has talked about this before, though. About the Harvey Weinstein thing. I feel like he, because I, I, that's what he was explaining in the interview. He was like, yo, I got, in, I got blackballed. I got in trouble for talking about Harvey before all of this shit came out. And he said that in his stand-up? I don't know if it was in his stand-up, but I feel like he said that uh, he said that somewhere before. Salute to Shannon Sharp, though. Club Shay Shay be cooking. He is cooking, man. Club Shay Shay be fucking cooking. Amazing. Like Club Shay Shay, the motherfuckers be going on there wilding, saying all types of shit. I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think Cat Williams is lying. But I don't think it's a but. I think these motherfuckers, them some wild ass boys in fucking Hollywood. No, they're wild boys. And I think, in when, and I think when you got that kind of power and you got that kind of money, you you probably say shit like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I don't, you know, I just I I, I, I still don't know why he would want to suck a dick. That's the crazy thing to me. Yeah, if you're the person with the power and you have the ability to change somebody's situation, why would you be sucking the dick? Yeah, yeah. That's what makes it even wilder. But maybe. You're a comedian. Cat's a comedian. So that's a better bit. It is a way better <laughs> that's bit. A better bit. It is a you better bit. You know what bit. I'm saying? Like if he was to say Harvey asked me to do X, Y, and Z, nah, he says, we I, expect that. He says something funny afterwards. He said, "I hell no, I ain't do that shit." Now I got to the table read, and there were two other black dudes there, and I was like, "Well, how the fuck y'all get into this movie?" <laughs> <laughs> So he could just be doing a bit. It's funny. It's hilarious. It's funny. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny, man. It's funny. What else we got, Taylor? Taylor Tay -tay. Gang. Tay Tay. Tay Tay. I saw Kat say something too about Kevin Hart. And he said Kevin Hart's um Kevin Hart's come up wasn't organic. I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree with that. And the reason I disagree with that is because we watched Kev not succeed in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We watched his NBC sitcom. I think it was NBC. We watched his sitcom not succeed in Hollywood. We watched Soul Plane not do well. Also, stand-up is like as organic as it gets. Like Kevin was selling out these shows. Yeah, he was what, selling yes. out clubs, arenas. Like people have to leave their house and then go see you. There's nothing the in like the industry can keep putting somebody in a movie that we don't like. Yeah. And Eventually, it's just like they gave this person opportunities that none of us give a fuck about, but they like them, so they're going to do it. And maybe that's what happened with Kevin initially. But with stand-up, nobody can force people to go see your show. That's right. They either like you or they don't like you. So, yeah, I don't... Play, play, I don't play, play, play the clip, Taylor. Play the clip. Scroll up, scroll, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Go to Coach Millennial, scroll up, Taylor. Right. Yeah, play that one, that one, that one. Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold Start out Kevin Hart show. There being a line. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. I do. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? 
No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know about the early out. L.A. shit, but we watched Kev yeah. sit sitcom not be successful. We watched Kev's Soul Plane not do well. And then Kev hit that stand-up circuit. Hmm. And Kev was in those comedy clubs. And, hmm. Kev, and, and, and I, I can tell y'all things that I saw firsthand. Kev would have his team walk around the comedy clubs and collect everybody's email. And he would collect these emails all across the country. And he started sending out a newsletter. Kev would send out a newsletter every, every, every week telling you where he's going to be. By the time all of these social media platforms hit, I remember when Twitter first came out, and we all was like, how the fuck Kev get all of these followers? Because he already had this database of people right. because of his newsletter. Yeah. I remember when Kev sold out, and I've told this story a million times. It's in Kev's book, too. Kev sold out Caroline's Comedy Club 12 times in a weekend. Like, he did some unprecedented shit where he had, like, shows on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, like three shows a night or four shows a night. Some crazy, it was yeah. some... Crazy, unprecedented number. Kept adding shows. Sold out, packed, lying down the fucking block. And just, I, we, we, we backstage, Kevin Duvall going at it like they always do. Like just back in, back then, like they, you know, because they were always on the same circuit. Going back and forth. Kev looked at Duvall and said, hey, man, they about to announce my name. When they announce my name, the crowd's going to go so crazy that I'm not going to be able to hear you. So we probably should just end this conversation now. And as soon as Kevin said that, coming to the stage, you seen him on this, you seen him on that, you seen him on that, from Philadelphia, Kevin Hart. Crowd loses it. Kev walks off, turns back to Duval, winks, <laughs> and goes on stage. I saw that for myself. That was 2009. <laughs> Maybe early 2010. <laughs> so yeah, that's the you know I I, I, I got to disagree with a uh, cat on that one. I, I I was at one of those sold out shows. Yeah, I remember when he did that at Caroline's, and that was such a huge moment huge deal. Yeah, <clears throat> so I have to disagree with Cat on that one. Um, what else we got? Every time I cough, Chris looks at me crazy. He's like, man, he just came back from Africa. <laughs> He's coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like, I don't know what the fuck is going on over there, but I don't want that shit. You think Charlotte got the malaria? <laughs> Chris, does Charlotte have the malaria or what? Oh, no. I'm not thinking malaria. What do you think he got? The Vinsky? COVID. He got the dirt. Ebola! <laughs> um. <laughs> yo, shout out to my man that jumped over that desk, yo. Yo, son. <laughs> that motherfucker went from Ja Morant to fucking Canelo Alvarez Yo, in a matter nah, of minutes. Yo, what was it? Jimmy Snooker? Superfly Jimmy Snooker? Yeah, didn't he do the... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Superfly Jimmy Snooker. That guy is crazy. You a wild boy. If yeah. the fucking uh, judge denies your probation... Yeah. And your response is to do some shit like that. She made the right decision. She really did. She made the she right decision. She really did, choice. yo. He can't be in the street. No way, Jose. Swan dove over the desk. Bro, do you yo, know how Look insane? on her face. She went like this. She went, he not really going to, uh? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, boom. I want to know what he was charged with. Yeah, we got to find Cause out. Because he got it, like, he, you got to be about to do, like, like. But he couldn't be because he's got his probation denied. Whatever, whatever he did or whatever he's accused of. I mean, that was... He did that shit. That was werewolf shit. He did that yeah, shit. Yeah, he's so, guilty. If that yeah. motherfucker's on that steam list, we know what the fuck was going on. This is insane. Like, like for you to jump, Bruh, for you to rush to judge the and dive jump over is the desk, crazy. And how? And and by the way, I ain't never seen a bailiff ever do their job. Yeah, bruh. <laughs> yeah, getting, where is the bailiff? He's getting fired. Fired. Oh, he got to be out of He's trying to grab his foot. Look at look at the bailiff go for the foot. Fired, bruh. Listen, I saw some wild shit too. Leaving um, 
and we were leaving Zanzibar. Uh-oh. Man, it was like... <laughs> Uh-oh. It was like 2, 3 in the morning, and... You know, you're going through security and shit. So I'm looking at the x-ray. The ladies, the lady at the x-ray machine, she's like, Nope. All the back. No, no, no way. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm no, sitting there looking no, like, no, no. God damn. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> she was just knocked out. And you know, it wasn't like she was alone. Her co-workers didn't give a fuck neither. I'm ah. like, okay, shit. Let's, uh, what else we got, Taylor? Shout out to Snoop Dogg. He's going to be doing the corresponding for the Olympics. Love this, bro. You know what I mean? Shout out to Snoop. Man. Salute to Snoop. Oh, Always love to see Snoop prosper. You that's know, gonna be really one cool. of our greatest icons ever. I'm in that new Snoop movie. What's it called? Underdogs. For real? Mm-hmm. I think I played a bad guy. So it's about football or something, right? Yeah, it's like Pop Warner yeah, football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw the uh, promo for that. Isn't Mike Epps in there too? Mike Epps is in yeah, it. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Salute to Mike Epps too, man. What Mike Epps did in his hometown is amazing. What he do? Yeah. He bought back, he bought his old block and he um re renovated all the houses on the block. Oh, he bought it? Yeah, he bought the whole block, renovated He the did house. home renovation? He did, yeah, man. This guy's rich, yeah, I bro. Love, I love it. <laughs> yeah, this guy, we gotta talk to him. Mike Epps been getting it for a long time, yes, man. Yes, he has. Let's do some, uh, ask, we got another ad? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Let's do another ad and let's do some Asking Idiots. Well, maybe we'll Trina get- Trina explains how Beyonce helped open door for female rappers. Yeah, I love Trina. I didn't understand what the fuck she was saying with that. I love Trina. And I, you know I'm a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter, but like, it's no need for us to get crazy and say things that just aren't true. You know what I mean? Because I don't know what door for female rappers Beyonce opened. Love Beyonce to death. I'm a Pink, I told you, Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter. But, but there's a bunch of other rappers Trina could have named. I mean, and, and you could even go generations, right? You could say Queen Latifah, MC Light for their generation. Then you can go Little Kim, Foxy Brown, the brat for their generation. People always like to leave the brat out. The brat was the first female rapper to go platinum. You know, first solo female rapper to go platinum. Salt and Pepper, I don't even, that's like the 80s. Salt and Pepper, you know, they opened the doors. Um, I was trying to go in the timeline, but clearly I got my timeline mixed up when I put Lil' Kim and the brat and Foxy before Salt and Pepper. But then after that, you got the Nicki Minaj's. Like mm. this whole new era of women over the last decade. Lauren Hill. I don't know if where I put Lauren in there. Really? As a rapper? Because Lauren was not just a rapper. Uh, okay. You know, she was a rapper singer. Mm, and when and, and when Lauren came, the doors were already open. The reason I really give Nikki a lot, a lot, a lot of credit, the doors for female rap was closed at that time. Mm. When when Nikki when Nikki started bubbling with, with with Young Money early on, even before that, when she was on the Fendi, the DVD, the Come Up DVDs, like female rap was kind of stagnant yeah. in a lot of ways, you know. And she came in and had tremendous, tremendous success, and I think that uh, reignited the female rap fire in the in the music industry. So that's why somebody like Nikki, I say Nikki opened a lot of doors. And you do got to give Cardi credit too cuz Cardi opened doors too. Cardi opened doors in a different way cuz Cardi came from the social media aspect of, mm. you know? So she opened the door for a whole another generation of women. So yeah, I wouldn't I don't see what Beyoncé fits in that equation. Long story short. Um what's the what's the ad, Taylor? Taylor Gang. Taylor man. Taylor Gangs. New Year, same old Taylor. Guys, thank you so much to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of the podcast. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website. Engage your audience to sell anything, your products, content you create, even your time. Upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. With the new asset library, you'll be able to manage all your files in one central hub and use them across Squarespace's platform Get started with one of the most professional website templates that are out there, and they are already ready to go at Squarespace. They have designs in every category and use case. Then customize your look, update the content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every single device. Okay? Listen here. Right now, 
You can improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. How can you do that? Because they have the insights that you need to grow your business. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's do some asking idiots Taylor gang. So Michael Blackson said, he said, Cat Williams is a very smart midget nigga. He took shots at the 10, at the top 10 comedians alive today so we can all respond and make him relevant again. Michael wow. said, I can't believe this line. Dehydrated leprechaun said he told me to build a school, LMAO. I only build a free school so the kids can whip your ass for free. Uh, I don't agree. Uh, Cat Williams is always relevant. He's Cat Williams. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Cat Williams is one of the best stand-ups. You know, everybody has always thought Cat was funny. Like, the thing I love about stand-up comedy. Unbelievably funny. Unbelievably funny. The thing I love about stand-up comedy, if you've ever been a great at stand-up comedy, People are always interested to hear what you got to say. There's going to be some curiosity. That's yeah. right. Whether it's a podcast, whether it's a special. So I, I, it, it's hard to use words like relevant for people like Cat Williams. Like, he's a legend. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, 100%. That being said, now after this interview, I'm like, oh, I got to see a Cat show. Like, I, to me, it, like, piques my interest a little bit more. Like, I see how funny this guy's being. I see how salacious he is, how opinionated he's he is. He's on the road like, every year, though. Of course. I'm just saying it's a reminder for me, for the yeah. average person. Sometimes you can get out of your group that is going to come support you no matter what. So. I remember when Kat, Kat took a shot at me on flat TV. What did he say? Kat said, Kat said, this was years ago. Can you pull it, pull it up, Taylor? Let's see if you can find that. He said, I forgot what the context was. He said, because I said something, and he was like, my question for Charlemagne is if he was to die the day, would anybody care or some shit like that? God damn. <laughs> What's that about, bro? That's harsh. <laughs> I, I think people would care. I mean, now. At oh, the you time, think they back might not then. Care. <laughs> Oh, wow. I mean, he this might is, have been right back then. Bro, there's a sad... <laughs> you seen a clip of him roasting uh, uh, the, the female radio host? Oh, yeah, Wanda. That Classic. shit was crazy. Race. Classic. I mean, he just had... Cat Williams. Cat Williams is going to die. If Cat Williams does not change his ways, if Cat Williams does not start moving in a different route, Cat Williams is going to end up in jail a day. Because it's only but so many times somebody that's 4 foot 11 and 90 pounds going to keep trying people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could say that about... Uh, most of the black men I know, and somehow be correct, uh, understand that saying that somebody's either going to end up dead or something else is almost not even worth saying. I, I don't really know anybody who didn't end up dead. It's really about what you do in your life. And so now he is certainly uh, able to have his opinion. But last time I checked, Cat Williams is either going to end up dead or living forever. And <laughs> those two choices are fine. The real question is, <laughs> if he were to die, would anyone care? I can't seem to spit on the sidewalk without full TMZ coverage. I'm imagining he doesn't have anything against me as a person. He just decided he was going to be the donkey of the day or speak his mind. I know the guy. He's funny. I, so I'm saying I'm sure he was telling a joke um, to say I would end up dead or in jail. I've been in jail lots. You bail out. <laughs> Your life doesn't end there. So I'm saying I'm already born again. I've already fulfilled both of his fantasies. Listen, and now he can Cat is the man. Cat he is he, he, that's mesmerizing. What but that's what I mean. But that's what I mean. When, when, when you say somebody like for Michael Blackson yeah. to say Cat Williams is mentioning names to be relevant, he's he's a legend already. He's an icon. When Cat says names, regardless of the salaciousness that he's attaching to it. All of this shit is going viral. Yeah. I, ain't, I haven't even watched the whole interview yet. Yeah. But I'm just looking at all these clips. It seems like every hour some new shit is going viral. Yeah. Cat Williams spoke about this. Person. I didn't know he spoke about Michael Blackson until Michael Blackson said something. Yeah, did I. But Michael Blackson is like, yo, let me let people know he's talked about me too. Because yeah. now Michael is going viral. Yeah. You know so what I'm saying? Everybody's eating off Everybody's it. eating off each other. Yeah. You know, it's, you. A good, it's a good fucking Wednesday. Yeah. Shit. Um, let's do some asking idiots. Yeah. Ooh, Vic 1787 says, Andrew, what's next now that you've conquered MSG? Well, I still I still gotta do my MSG shows, so that's what we're focusing on right now. 
So the tour is obviously happening. And, um, yeah, refining and getting it perfect and making sure there's something extra special for those MSG shows. That's what's going on. That is actually the biggest thing you have to focus on. Yeah. Selling it out is one thing, but now you got to show people why you were worthy of, doing of selling it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm hyped for that. I'm excited about that. Do you Are you afraid? Meaning that when you get to that level... Do you, I'm glad, like, I like your answer because it's like there's no need, the what's next is making sure it's a great show. That's the what's now, that's what was yesterday, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what's yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's my complete focus in stand-up right now is just making sure this show is so special. And this show is different than anything I've ever done, so it's like I want to make sure that it's also greater than anything I've ever done. I'm with you. That's the best way to focus, man. Yeah. It's been a bad year for white comedians with nice hair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't know. I texted you over the holidays about some shit because I was confused. I was like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, shit. What did I miss? Shit. Let's screw what else we got, Taylor. Uh, Tia Jenna says, well, we just talked about it. What are y'all thoughts on Kat's recent interview? Cat Williams. I mean, we just talked just, about just it. Just got an answer, Tia. Super entertaining. Um... I mean, that's it. Like, what? What? there's nothing else. If Cat wants to, you know, garner attention, he can do it in a heartbeat. That's what that proves. And by the way, once again, Cat goes on tour every Arenas. year. Arenas. That's what I'm saying. New material. He's, yes. he's prolific. Yes. And when he sits down on an interview or podcast, if he wants to light it up, he could light it up because that's what the fuck he does. And the biggest thing about Cat, man, that I'll say, uh, just to put a button on the Cat Williams thing, what I love about Cat Williams, I don't know him personally. I think I met Cat like once way back in the day when I was working with Wendy. But I like how I hear other comedians talk about him. Yeah. Other comedians talk about how Cat took me on the road. Hmm. You know, Cat put money in my pocket. Like to me, that's what I care about. I care about, you know, what are you doing with your position? You know, are you of service? In that way, and I think I, I saw a clip where he spoke about that too. He said he went on. He's taking twenty six different comedians on the road. That's a lot. A lot of people. If you think about it, that's a lot. If you, to say you took twenty six comedians on the road, and I can name a few of them. Like I know Lunell speaks very highly of Cat Williams. Miss Pat speaks very highly of Cat Williams. You know what I'm saying? I know Red Grant. I don't know Red Grant really personally either, but he speaks highly of Cat Williams. But I've heard numerous different comedians always speak highly of Cat and talk about the money that they've, you know, received because of Cat. So, I, I you know, I respect shit like that. I, I, shit, I've heard stories of strangers who've said things like, uh, I know it wasn't a stranger, it was a comedian. I just heard say Cat saw them perform somewhere and Cat enjoyed their performance so much that at the end of the night, Cat just said, Here's, he just gave them like a thousand dollars or some wow. shit like that. That'll change a comic's life too, man. Yeah. So yeah, especially if you're doing spots for twenty five bucks and some guy hands you a rack. It's yeah, that's big. Let's let's scroll down, Taylor. American Plague says if you can do if you can undo one thing you did to a person, what would it be and who? Wow. Whoa, that's a big one. If you can undo one thing you did to a person, what would it be and who? Hmm. What's yours, Taylor? Taylor? Get the mic, Taylor. What's me? Make fun of Mayweather. You always say that. You oh yeah. I don't think you care about that. I mean, I do care, but I don't know if I would undo it. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a tough one, man. Yeah, I'm trying to think of time where like I hurt someone's feelings, but I didn't want to. Bro, you're a comedian. Yeah. I'm a jokester. Yeah. <sighs> Can't everyone say that though? No, because they're not as funny as us. And yeah. well, I'm just saying, though, they could play their. But I'm saying, if they're trying to be one, you could just be like, well, I'm a comedian. Like, your jokes suck. Yeah, I'm trying to think. You know what What's saying? the time? What's the time, though? We should be able to get this. Like, we hurt somebody. I don't know, because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like everything truly happens for a reason. You know, I think sometimes we say that statement, oh, everything happens for a reason, and we say that as if it's just some mystical stuff. No, sometimes shit happens because you're an asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes shit happens because you was a jerk in that moment. But if you learn from it, 
and like there I was wish, a lesson in it. Like, I wish there was like little shit like like with my brother. I wish I wasn't like as hard on him like if when we were playing one on one. You know what I mean? I know this no, sounds petty, you. but it's just like I wish that I was maybe more supportive or found the best way to engage him and instead of just being like kind of competitive at basketball or whatever. I could have probably been nicer in those moments. Yeah, I'm with that. I think for me that's probably what it would kind of be like too. It's just like, you know, being a parent is a it's like on the job training. Mm. So you might find yourself getting short with your kids. Yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Or yeah. You might even yell sometimes, and you automatically got to take all of that back. Yeah, you know, because yeah. you don't you want to do any damage. Like, in, like yeah, you just don't know. Like I did that to my my eight year old today. I'm trying to because I'm in the where, where the plane is landing, so I'm trying to adjust the five year old seat and everything, and get her ready for landing. And then my eight year old is trying to tell me something, and I'm like, I'm trying to help over here, and she's trying to tell me something. And oh, my 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 five year old's ears were popping. Oh, that's fucked. So she was asking for gum, but everybody had already put their bags up. Yeah. So I'm trying to tell her to drink water, you know, and she don't understand that aspect of just swallowing, you know, because she's just used to chewing the gum. So my eight-year-old is trying to tell me, um, I forgot what she was trying to say, but I'm just like, shh, hush, I'm trying to figure it out. But she's trying to tell me something in order to help the five-year-old. Yeah. So it's like stuff like that. When you do that, you're like, oh, I didn't have to tell her. Shh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's not that bad. Just going shh. And it, nah, it kind of is. You know what I mean? Because she's like, I'm trying to tell you something. And I'm like, hush. Yeah. You know? Because you don't want to think that an eight-year-old knows what they're talking about. Yeah. But they do. But they do. Yeah. You know, they're humans. All of these, they're kids, but they're humans. You just got to listen to them. And I think that's something that I personally, as a parent, you know, always wish my dad mostly did more of when I was young. Yeah. So when you find yourself doing that, you know, as a father, you like, ah, I don't want to do I that. I don't want to repeat kids. that. Yeah. So so anytime when you say undo one thing you did to a person, what would it be and who? Ninety five percent of it is probably a bunch of stuff that had to do with it's uh, the people you care about. My kids. Yeah, it's the people I'm, that you love, like yeah, I'm sure. Like, even with my mom, like, now you're a little bit older. I think, like, you realize that your parents are human, too, and they have their flaws and stuff. And it's like, knowing that, oh, maybe I could have been more supportive. Maybe I know I could have been more loving, et cetera. And, uh, and I beat myself up over stupid shit anyway. Like, for example, we're on the plane from Dar Salaam to Zanzibar. It's like a 20-minute flight. There's a dude sitting next to me. Dude looks to me, and he's like, Charlemagne, Charlemagne the God, whatever, whatever. And he, I guess he lives in Zanzibar. And he's like, man, can I get a picture? And I'm like, yo, you know, let's, let's wait till we get off the plane, right? Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm with my kids and everybody else. Plane lands, we get off the plane. I'm waiting for the dude to get off the plane. Yeah. He <laughs> get off the plane. Why not? I don't, I don't know. I really don't know why. I, maybe he was waiting on something. I don't know. But I, I was out. Yeah. And I've been thinking about that shit ever since. Oh, don't feel bad <laughs> about lying. that. Bro. I'm like, man, I wish I'd have fucking took the picture with the Nah, bro. don't feel you bad. You know what I mean? But it's stuff like that that I will beat myself up over. Like little yeah. tiny shit like that. Like, so I don't know. I, if I'll go crazy thinking about this question. If you can undo one thing you did to a person, what would it be and who? Yeah, I think it's just tons. Like, especially the people that you love. You wish you could be the best version of Absolutely. yourself with them. And the reality is you're not going to be the best version Absolutely. of yourself with them. And, and it's always happened, right? The people that you love will always check you. They'll be like, I don't like that you did such and such. And at first you're defensive, right? You're like, I didn't mean it like that. And you know how we are and this and that, blah, blah, blah. But if the person is telling you that they didn't like what you said, you got to apologize and keep it moving. Yeah. I've done that to tell every day of our life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I can't stop fucking with her. <laughs> the jokes are too good. She makes it too easy. Yeah, but it's getting hard now because even when you compliment her, she's gonna take it like a you know, it's like a diss. Exactly. And, and that's that, that leads us to our that leads us to our last asking <laughs> idiot from Trex Money. What's the one New Year's resolution you have every year but never followed through with? We know what tail is this. What? What's your New Year's resolution? <laughs> I'm trying to pick. I'm, you know what my resolution is? Hers is the quick you know resolution every is? year. I'm she got a queen. I'm that choosing peace. The, you I'm eat, choosing you eat peace. too many animals. Hers is the I'm quick smoking peace. every year. And no, we know you're not going to do that. I'm choosing my resolution is choosing <laughs> peace. But clearly. What do you mean? Clearly. We know you're not going to stop smoking. I love you, yo. You look like you stopped smoking. <laughs> 
I'm gonna fuck y'all up. So, you do look like you stopped smoking. When I walked in, I thought you stopped smoking. I'm cheese and peace. I thought you stopped smoking. I'm cheese you look and like peace. you stopped smoking. I'm cheese and peace for this new year. Wait, what do you mean? I, I'm, I, I'm cheese that? and peace. You, just, you can't even take a compliment. I am telling you. Can you do that? I'm can telling you, you what my resolution year? is is choosing peace. You know what my New Year's resolution is? I'm not gonna be nice to you no more. <laughs> I'm not going to compliment you, you every time I see you because it's not well received. It's not well received at all. It's unbelievable. I just get rejected every time I say something nice. I it's say you lost weight. I say you look like you smoke less. Mine is to stop lying for 2024. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. I'm like, I don't want to do Like, Andrew just be lying still. I don't want to do that. I don't want to lie. lie. I don't want, and if I do lie, I'm gonna let you. Lie so and if I do lie, I'm going to let you know I'm lying. That's why I always tell you, believe me even when I'm lying. I'm not going to do that no more. Taylor, I'm not lying when I tell you. Why is it me? You still smoke. Leave me alone. You high right now. You look like you lost weight. You look like you smoke less. And to be honest. What was the top two resolutions again? <laughs> it was quit smoking and lose weight and mm -hmm. exercise. You got faster at switching the uh, things. And you did. No, she did. Yo, Taylor, you I ain't going to never lie to you. I think from last year to this year, you got faster <laughs> at bringing up the topic we want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely got to faster. Peace, yo. I miss Taylor, man. I'm so did I. <laughs> I miss her too. Ah! She didn't call me once. She didn't say Happy Thanksgiving. She didn't say she Merry didn't Christmas. Me neither. She just sent me that text about her aunties. Did I go to my DMs and saw them all in my DMs? Isn't that crazy? Your <laughs> aunt is going to say Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas before you do. Isn't that fucked up? You could just message a group chat. I said hello to everybody. I said, Taylor, Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Oh. I'm just saying. I was like, fuck all that. I ain't said no happy New Year's. If you re if you sent me one, I replied back. But I'm like, why do I? Why? Yo, I did that this year, too. Who gives a no, fuck? Yeah, yeah, no, I ain't so like, this year. Yeah, like, like, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't fuck. gonna lie, man. All right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think you're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.